Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like at a clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Deep Owl Picks Edition. And it's playoff time, isn't it, boys and girls? Woo! Everybody's doing the Pearl of Dance. Yeah, buddy. We are going to be rocking some playoffs. I'm going to give you today. I'm going to give you the games for Saturday, which you see in the background here. Uh, we're going to do the Vancouver-Edmonton game. Kind of tough one. And then we'll do Boston-Washington. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do some series predictions for the, the games over the weekend. You'll see what I mean when I do it. And then I'll do the rest of them on Sunday. Uh, series predictions when the other games are on for the North and whatever. The West, I guess it would be. But I'll give you, I'm going to give you the pick for the Boston-Washington game. And uh, then I'll, we'll do the series, series picks and the Edmonton-Vancouver game. Uh, thank you very much for subscribing. We are up to over 750. Fifty followers, yo, heading for a G, heading for a thousand. Um, you might want to check out another video I just did. We did the East prediction video with Slapshot Sweethearts and Steel Flyers. These guys are awesome. Slapshot Sweethearts, they do a live every day, live stream every day. Great Pittsburgh and Boston Bruins fans, but they know their hockey. You really enjoy it. I enjoy doing it. Go check it out. Um, okay. And thanks for your subscriptions and subscribing right now like you're doing right now. Look at, see? Saw Ian there. Ian, what's your last name? Ian? Uh, okay, you don't want to tell me? I saw him just touch the subscribe button. That makes you feel good inside, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing, everybody. Pearls of Wisdom Necklace, heading to your way. Pearlocopter, do your door. By Hernandez or Melissa. Pearlocopter drivers. Okay, let's look at the picks for uh, Vancouver Edmonton. Edmonton's only getting 152 on here. The problem I have a little bit, well, a lot with this game, actually is they're going to be Edmonton's going to be putting Stalic in that. And I actually think Stalic isn't a bad goaltender really. Um maybe even better than Koskinen, but he hasn't played in a really long time. Um and Vancouver's going to be rocking Demko. Now Vancouver has had two days off, but they just flew from Montreal. And they've had a horrid schedule up until now. One of the biggest questions we have, of course, is are the Oilers going to sit a bunch of guys for this game? It's pretty much about as meaningless game for them as you can get. So I am basically, right now, I'm giving you a pick on this right now, but I'm doing it lightly. If you were a Patreon member, uh, which you can do, I'll put it, the link in the description there for you or you can ask in the comment section and I'll give it to you I'll give you a free month check it out you can have all the playoffs for free to see if you like it uh, if you stick with me till next season's hockey season you'll never may pay more than the uh, $25 or if you want to take a smaller package that's fine too uh, um, you'll never pay any more than that um, I also do tennis picks, uh, baseball picks. We're hitting pretty well, – tennis picks we hit, we rock at. Although this clay court season has been ooh, a little bit iffy. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, we do well. So you can make money while you're waiting for hockey to go if you're a big hockey person. Uh, so it's not a big deal. You're going to make your money. Anyways, um, like I said, things can change depending on who Edmonton might sit. Stalic looks like he's going to be in net. However, I got to still go with Edmonton. Vancouver just looks absolutely exhausted. I don't even think, like, people, I've heard people say, you know, they gave up. I'm not really sure about that. It doesn't look like they have much in them. That COVID really knocked the crap right out of them. 
So I'm going to go Edmonton, but I'm only going to go on the money line, which is only paying 152. Um, as far I would probably go over here because if Vancouver wins, they'll probably score quite a bit on on uh, Stalock. Um, so basically, you're just covering your bet on the on the line by taking the over because uh, if Vancouver wins, it'll probably be over. If Edmonton wins, there's a little more chance it could be under because Demko is in net. And it would mean Vancouver didn't really score all that much. But uh, the way Edmonton's been going, the way they've been playing in their offensively and the rhythm that they have, I'd probably go over anyways. So we'll go Edmonton and over six. Now the big game. And then we'll get into the series as well on this one. Washington versus Boston. Um, this is the first game of, of course, this playoffs between the two of them. Um, as far as I can tell, they're still going with Vanacek. So Sam Sonoff really must have got his butt kicked by COVID because they're not playing him. And he's certainly the better goaltender if he's okay. And he's not okay. The first game at home, there should be fans for Washington. Um, we'll get into who I think is going to win this series. I think this is a tough game, the first one at home. This is where Washington's going to have their energy flowing and everything. I think Washington might win the first game here. Oh, it's tough. They got to pull one out. This is the first one. This is the exciting fans are cheering, especially when they haven't really had fans that much. Uh, yeah, I think that motivation should get them. Oh, only had 10 naps today. Pardon me. 14 nap, you know, recommended. Highly recommended. I'm going to write a book on it. Benefits of 14 naps a day. Um, so I'm going to go Washington on this game. Yeah. <laughs> I keep on hesitating. Yeah, I'm going to go Washington. I'm going to go Washington. I'm going to go Washington, and because I'm going to go Washington, I'm going to go over. So we're getting good money on both of those picks. All right. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over because this means that Washington gets through to Rask. Boston should score to Washington in, in their excitement. Maybe over first period here too. One and a half. Washington's going to come out flying here. Um it's hard to take an over with Tuka Rask in that and in a playoff. No, I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna go over. Okay, that's enough. I, I'm obviously I'm a little uneasy about this game, not super bullish on it, but might as well go. You're getting dog money. Oh, it just did it just switch like that? No, no. What am I talking about? You're getting dog money off for Washington at home in the first game of the series. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, now we're going to look at the series. This is on Bet365. It's the best there. I said it. Uh, I'm just going to make sure we're all centered here so you can see everything. Okay, good. So we're going to do the weekend game, weekend series, each one. Uh, Bruins versus Caps, Wild versus Golden Knights, Islanders versus Penguins, Lightning versus Panthers. Okay, um, I like to do the decimal odds. I hope that doesn't bother you guys. This is the American odds, though, so you can follow through with that. Maybe you get a good idea. I like doing decimal odds. It's kind of the Canadian way. Uh, I just find it's easier, but you do whatever you wish. Uh, Bruins versus Washington Capitals. Uh, Bruins minus 165. 
uh, for the series. Okay. Basically, Boston, to me, has got the momentum coming into this series. Uh, even the game that they're going to win here, I'm pretty sure it's going to be tight. If I, I'm taking Washington, but I don't think it's going to be a blowout by any stretch. Uh, I don't. I I doubt Washington will blow out Boston at all in this series. Um, Tuka Rask against Vanacek with Vanacek in net, it's tough to take the Caps in a seven game series with that. With not that he's a terrible goaltender, he's he's only twenty. 25, 24, 25. It's his first year in the league, and he's shown it a lot during the year. Um, he doesn't put up. He hasn't put up, you know, great numbers. So, you know, if they're going to keep on going with them, I'm taking Boston here for sure at 160. Uh, if you can find those some prop odds where you can go Boston Bruins in six or under. I would even do that. I, I really think Boston's going to rip up the Washington Capitals here. Um, I, I, let's look at some arguments for otherwise. Uh, now, if Washington's going to win this, I think a lot of it's going to rely on their defense here. And this is cap friendly, but they have a lot of the ones that guys were injured here uh, or it's already not playing because of being ill or because they were sitting them as well. So anyways, but John Carlson, Dimitri Orloff, Dylan and Schultz with Chara, that's the one of the big stories, right? Chara going up against his old team. That is a much more um, experienced defense than the Boston Bruins. And I think if they're going to win, it's going to be on that in that vein, the, their their experienced defense. Here you got Matt Grizzlick, great guy, good player, uh, put up 20 points in 37 games this year. Can you guys see that all right? Shoot, there. See, Matt Grizzlick, sorry. Matt Grizzlick, uh, McAvoy, Riley, and Carlo. Fairly young group here. 27, 23, 27, 24. Carlo has, doesn't have much playoff experience. Jeremy Lauzon doesn't have very much playoff experience. It's a pretty green group. Um, however, if we look at the offense, um, I really like the Boston Bruins offense after they got Taylor Hall. You have... Uh, Brad Marchand, Bergeron, and Pasternak, of course. And Hall has worked perfect on that line with Krejci and Smith. Um, now, over and, and then Richie Corrali Coyle is a great third line. Excellent third line. Charlie Coyle, nice, big, bumping, putting him on the wing. I like him actually better on the wing than I do at center. Uh, Nick Ritchie's put up some points this year, 26 points in 56 games. You're looking at seeing scoring depth in Boston, which has been something we haven't been able to say for quite some time with Boston. Um, pretty, uh, uh, the, in the beginning of the year, you would not have said Boston's scoring depth is going to win a series. But I think in this case, that would be tied with, with Tuka Rask, that that's exactly what's going to happen here. Um, if you look at Washington's now, and you would think, you think right off the top of their head, at least I did, Washington's got the better forward depth. You know, Ovechkin, Backstrom, awesome. Oh, she's not on here. He'll be up here, probably here. And Kuznets, uh, the Kuzi, Kuznetsov, is he still in COVID? Protocol. I mean, he did something. I don't know if he's even going to be playing first, if anybody heard about that. But even if they – let's say he's back in here. He hasn't had a great year. He's only had 23 points in 44 games. Now, you throw Oshie on the wing. Nice. Okay, Connor Sherry. Tom Wilson is a great – is an awesome uh, – uh, you, you, I'd even put him. You could even put him up here. You could put Oshie and Wilson 
in the middle with Kuznetsov. That's probably what it's going to be. So that is good. Your top six is, is good, but not as good as you think as Kuznetsov has not played well. I don't like their second line center position. You put Eller down here in the third line with Sprong, who has no uh, playoff experience at all, and Raffle. Um, not bad, not a bad third line, but not smoking. And then Haglin, Dowd, and Hathaway. I, I like Boston's fourth line better. So I like the goaltending better. I'll give the defense a the defenseman to Washington by a hair. Uh, but I like the scoring depth on Boston and the goaltending. So I got to go with Boston. Okay. Let's go to the next series. I probably won't go in quite as much depth on the next one because we have uh, quite a bit to go. We have we have two teams, and I have stretched it quite long already. Islanders versus the Penguins. Okay. Um, the Penguins, I be, the Penguins are getting the getting what one sixty six, so and that's uh, minus one fifty in American odds. Um, and the Islanders are getting 230. Odds-wise, I, I kind of want to go with the Islanders here because I think this is a coin flip series. Um, I, I'm pretty fady on the pick as a whole because Pittsburgh's coming in with the momentum right now. Now, the Islanders, though, have done this before where they go it they go through the playoff or into the playoffs looking like they're not there and then they just crush it as soon as the playoffs start i'm really on the fence about this series so if i'm on the fence about it i'm going to take the dog money with the islanders at 230 um Bar the islanders have the better goaltending than varlamov uh they have, I'd say, a little better defense. But Pittsburgh's done really well with a ragtag defense this year. And as far as the offense is concerned, with Melkin being back, uh, Gunsel, Crosby, uh, Zucker, um, Rust, I like the Pittsburgh offense better. Their depth, forward depth is definitely better. Now, this all goes all the heck if the Islanders come in and start playing like the Islanders, but they haven't really hit that all year. This is the first year where they really totally haven't hit their stride as what we know the Islanders to be all year long, pretty much. They've had certain times when they, when they look like they were heading that way, and I know because... With capping, we, you pay attention to it a lot. Um, the record wasn't bad. They got by. They, they got through it. But in the end, it started to fade on them. So I'm going to take Pittsburgh in seven here. Um, but if you could make a case. You, if somebody said, I like Islanders in six, I, I could see that happening. I like Pittsburgh in five. I could see that happening. It's one of those series where you can make a case for just about anything happening. So I'm going to take the Islanders on the dog money. Uh, cause, and I just said I'll take Pittsburgh in seven. But that's what I think is probably going to happen. I've given them a slight edge. But for 166, I don't want to flip that. I'd rather go with the Islanders and dog money and be wrong about the Pittsburgh in seven. If, if I think it's going to go to seven... There's a very good chance the Islanders take it. I'm just giving Pittsburgh a slight edge because they're coming in with momentum. But, I mean, the Islanders have turned that around real quick many times before. So I'm going to take the Islanders with the dog money at 230. Might as well. Yeah, 230, which is, as you can see, plus 130 American. Tampa Bay versus Florida. And uh, part of this is difficult because I want to know. I want to know who's going to be a net for Florida. 
I'm really not confident in Bobrovsky in anything. However, Vasilevsky can you know can crush it. However, I have not liked what I've seen from Tampa all year. And you'll say, well, look at their record and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you know what? They they won a lot of games that they shouldn't have won. Um, they got outshot a lot. They were outplayed and still won. I, 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 for one, think Vasilevsky should be in the conversation for the heart this year. He's been absolutely bombshell good most of the year again. Um, which would mean that he gets a Vesna. But... Florida is just something magical about them, isn't it? It feels like this is just a magical team. They play their butts off. And that's why I'm I'm kind of off on Tampa here. I'm going to go with Florida for the plus 140. So you're getting 240 on the series. Um, Tampa could turn it around, prove me wrong, no doubt about it. But... I saw far more heart out of Florida this year than I did Tampa. And people will say defense wins championships. I say heart wins championships and belief. Heart and belief. If you don't, you can have all the heart in you want, heart you want. In other words, try hard. But if you don't believe you're going to win it, you're just going to come close. And you can have all the belief you want. But if you don't apply a heart to that belief, the belief is empty. So I think the Florida Panthers look like a team that believe they can beat anybody, and they have heart like crazy. Um, they made some great moves in the RC, R, off season, getting Sam Bennett from Calgary. He's absolutely crushed it since he got there. And he was a huge playoff performer in Calgary. And then when the regular season, they didn't play him. They put him on the third and fourth line and just garbage, nonsense. I don't blame him for wanting out. He asked for a trade out of Calgary. And uh, he changes the whole dynamic of that Florida lineup. Um, he brings an element that they didn't really have before as a, a power center. They've got Barkov. I wouldn't call Barkov a power center. Great two-way center. One of the best in the league. But not really a par, par, uh, not really a, uh, a power center. In fact, a lot of teams don't have power centers. But having one is huge. So you got Barkov, Verhege, and Duclair, if you want to do it that way. Huberto, Bennett, and Owen Tippett. Watch out for freaking Owen Tippett in the playoffs here. He has been getting better all year long. This 18 points has probably got most of them in the second half, if you take a look at it. Uh, Vetrano, Wenberg, and Hornquist, awesome third line. The depth on this team is fantastic, as it turns out. Um, and then Lomberg, Noel Achari, and Mason Marchment, serviceable fourth line as well. The thing is, is their defense, on paper, does not look fantastic. I don't think that I would feel a, I don't think Aaron Eckblad's going to be back at all, right? No, he's going to miss the whole year. Oh, yeah, that's right. He just did a horrible job on his leg. Um, I would be much more comfortable if they started Trigger, but Bob Roski started looking really good near the end. So. I'm going to go with the heart in Florida, and I'm going to take Florida over Tampa Bay for 240. And we'll see what happens. I know you can say, well, you know, uh, uh, look at that. I, the players' names leave me. Kucherov will be back, and Stamkos might be back. Uh, I don't know what Stamkos has been injured so much. How much is he going to have in him? Um, I understand that. But they haven't been playing with the team all year. And this is a team that didn't look disjointed all year already. Uh, Stamkos get injured, right? Um, Andre Palat was injured. I don't know if he's coming back. 
I just like Florida's energy going in. I think Florida will take Tampa Bay. There you go. That's my futures. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you. Put your money down on it. Okay, bye.